time to strap in and get ready. The leaders in AFL Supercoach are incoming. Helping you win your leagues and climb up the rankings. You're now listening to the Insight AFL Show with your hosts, Big Horse, Skitty, and Hurry. G'day and welcome to the Insight AFL Show. I'm your host, the Big Horse, and with me, as always, Skitty. How are you, mate? Going fantastic, mate. Yeah, another uh, absolute massive weekend of footy. How bloody good was that? We had some absolute ripping games. We had some stinkers. We had some lightning delays as well, something you don't see every week. So very, very interesting game, but we got to get stuck into some big super coach news. Horse, how about you? How are you yeah. traveling, big fella? Uh, yeah, not too bad, mate. A couple of frothies today. Just took it nice and easy. Watched a bit of footy. I wasn't overly disappointed by the lightning delay. It just extended the time where I didn't have to cook dinner for. So it wasn't, wasn't too bad. Got to knock back a few chartinsies. And now here we are talking footy, the recap of round three. But, ladies and gentlemen, if you have not yet, please hit like, subscribe, and the bell. Be a triple banger so you know when we are going live. Also, jump in our Discord for less than 50 cents a week, which is... As you guys would know, Zinger Box upsized with an extra burger on the side. You will get our premium Q&A content every round of Super Coach, but not just for AFL, NRL, BBL, and NBL also. Uh, you'll get also insights to our trades, our captains, and some moving parts throughout the year. If you just want to get involved in our Discord, it is for free. So if you just want to talk footy, there are a heap of good lads that know what they're talking about in there, isn't there, Skitty? Bloody oath, mate. And also, too, We've now got the punters club that we organized last week. Oh. And mate, I know, look, I know you might think, oh, you know, I'd rather just get the zinger box from KFC instead of getting all these guys great insights and everything like that. But if you listen to our boy Kizza, um, he has gone off his rocket and I'm pretty sure made the boys a fair amount of coin this weekend. So you're actually losing money by not being oh. in the Discord. <laughs> Yeah, you're absolutely right. I, I reckon the bloke's paid off his mortgage after the wins he's had last <laughs> mate, weekend. But, it's mate, raining coin. <laughs> we, we, remember, only gamble what you can lose. But if you can win, fuck me, this man is all over it at the moment. But <laughs> yes, before we get stuck, yeah, he, he is the president. Uh, before we get stuck into it, ladies and gentlemen, our unlimited league, 913351. I repeat, 913351. If you win, you get a Super Coach Champions ring. Thanks to the guys at Supercoach Rings. Now, so, Skitty, yes. this week, our squeeze of the week. It's time for some news from around the league. Mick, I'm not liking this because the squeeze of the week has not gone off again. Unbelievable, <laughs> mate. No we one had... tipped Maxi Gorn. Mate, we've had a record number as well. We had 78 entries. It's gone up every single week. And you're kidding me. That not one person was able to tip Maxi Gaunt. So no, I mean, no. fair enough. A lot of a lot of Bont and Englishes, which you know, uh, was West hampered. In, yep. yep, hampered in the end. Thank you, Bevo, you dick. Um, but you know that happens, unfortunately. So hopefully it goes off next week. We might have to try and get a way to get a couple of extra guesses for people or something like that. Or you know, if if you are. Um, if you are in the chat, you know, get your sign up on your on your wife or your kids' account or something like that. Get a brand new account, drop in the squeeze of the week, you get another shot. So there you go, you know, lads. You know what we will do this week? <laughs> What's that? If someone does pick it right this week, I'm gonna throw in a standard squeeze hat. Thanks to Ooh. the guys at the standard squeeze who ironically have been with us since day one and are mm -hmm. our major sponsors. So they're helping yeah, you drink responsibly right. and conveniently. You can go to the website, thestandardsqueeze.com, and use the code INSIGHT15 to get yourself 15% off everything in store. Skiddy, our first game. Collingwood yes, managed sir. to hold on for their first win of the year, beating Brisbane by 20 points. Mm -hmm. Tommy Mitchell, mm. he was all right. Mate, I thought he was good. It's actually nice to see what he can do when he actually doesn't get subbed and he plays out a whole game. So mm -hmm. 24 touches and seven tackles. 120 super coach points. Just a quick shout out to everyone in the chat right now. Love all you boys. You guys are absolute legends. And, and um, before we continue on, deadly, it is too late to get, guess Maxi Gorn 170. <laughs> <laughs> bang on, though. Bang, yeah, bang on, on, though, mate. No. <laughs> um, Nikki Dacos, really, really slow start, 33 at halftime, and then turned it on 77 in the second quarter, in the second half, sorry, finished 
with 110. So mm-hmm. rewarding all those who held him. Just want to state as well, if you don't have him, this is not the time to bring him in. Hawthorne no. next week, then the bye. Ooh. Mm-hmm. Um, Johnny Noble shouldn't be dropped again from this Collingwood side. 24 touches, first game back, absolutely in his element, was running, carrying all the time, looked absolutely sensational. Um, 105 super coach points as well. Uh, yeah. Bruzzy, Bruzzy Maynard, 15 touches, eight marks. He had another 94. I don't think he's dropped below 90 so far this no, he's year. He's been pretty good, hasn't he? Yeah, yeah, Very he's consistent. been real, real nice. Um, Jordan Dugowie, ordinary again. So, what do you have last week? It was like Oh, About shocking. the same. Yeah. But he has 13 touches. This time he has 18 touches for 55 super coach points. So that is a big ew. Darcy Cameron. Oh my God. This was horrible from him. We, 18 yeah. super coach points for the whole game. We we were singing his praises because he was averaging 114 this year before this game, yeah. but he stunk it up, didn't he? But he's got prior history for this, and this is why we recommended you don't go to him. 100%, mate. And also, too, fun fact, he nearly had more hitouts than he did super coach points, which I just don't even yeah, fathom how that's even possible. But yeah. there you go. Um, Finn McRae subbed off on 30. Um, if you had him from the start of the year, you obviously weren't listening to this podcast because yuck, yuck, yuck. Um, Brisbane, Lockie Neal, uh, really back to his 30. Uh, he's real piggy best. 35 mm-hmm. touches, 129 super coach points. So he looks like he's getting it rolling for him. Um, Zorko added some much needed run off the Brisbane back line. Good to see yeah. that he looks to be the guy that's getting the nod over Archie and Wilmon. Mm-hmm. Um, Wilmon's still impacting Makes on the sense. wing, but yeah, I think they need like a bit of a level head there from Zorko down there. Um, 30 yeah. touches for 127 super coach points. Humor Cluggage started very, very slow, had one disposal at half time, but then finished with 29 for the game. At 110 super coach points, looked absolutely fantastic late. Um, Josh Dunkley, um, he, I thought, mate, quieter from a super coach perspective. I just don't know what's going on, mate. He was averaging for the first, what, 22 rounds, he was averaging 124 last year. And now it's like just not up to the same level, which was, which is a bit annoying. He had 26 touches, six tackles for 96 super coach points. And um, good, good for Collingwood to finally get their first win of the year. Um, Mm -hmm. I was at the old man's place and uh, my brother was losing his goddamn mind. So um, good to see them finally actually get on the board for the first time in season 2024. Now we got, we got the, uh, the brain in the chat. What did you boys score? Have you got uh, what you scored this week? Uh, I think it was like 18, it was around 1850. Absolute yeah. shit house. Um, unfortunately, yeah. my midfield primo in LDU did not yeah. stack up. Yeah. I, uh, 1947. So right. I feel like 1850 to 1900 is probably about par this week. Yeah, I think if you crack 2,000, you'd be absolutely You're doing, you're doing really well, given that you've yeah. got the likes of Real, you've got the likes of... Um, Tom, Tom Green, Green, yeah, Tuk Tuk Miller, Miller, Sam Flanders, yeah, Whitfield, all these sorts of guys that were on the buy. So, for those that have held smart, very mm-hmm. smart, mm-hmm. um, yeah, so let's move on to the next game. So, Carlton make it three from three, easily accounting for North Melbourne to the tune of 56 points. Now, mm-hmm. I want to ask you about Harry McKay, mate. Mm-hmm. Do we need to start taking this guy seriously? 19 touches, 10 marks, five goals for 137. Super coach points. Yeah, mate. I He's, think. Uh, yeah, sorry, Gob. Yeah. Do we do we need to jump on him? Um, I think it's definitely going to be something to be looking at. I just want to preface it that he's not going to have an easier game than that. Um, that was you know North back uh, full back line is nothing uh, very much to laugh at at the moment. So um, I think that's probably going to be his absolute best. But you know the the rucking extra is. Uh, is nice. And before you read on for the rest of this uh, this game, horse, just be very careful because if you say one wrong word, you'll probably get a 50-meter penalty or a free kick. So just be very yes. careful when you talk about the rest of yeah, it. Yeah, Carl, Carlton absolutely got some <laughs> stuff gifted to him, didn't they? Now, we've got the uh, Super Coach Whisperer in the chat. Hello, Josh. Uh, how'd, you, how'd I go in my 25 league or Insight 25 league, which is our $25 cash league? I can confirm that I lost to you by three fucking points. So thanks for bringing that up, mate. <laughs> I've just had a look, and uh, it is what it is. Um, 
So Adam Chera, he was efficient. 22 touches for his 128 super coach points. Georgie Hewitt at 440K had a nice game. 26 touches, six tackles for his 124 super coach points. Charlie Kerno kicked four from his 15 touches, 122 super coach points. But we did know against North Melbourne's underrated or undermanned back line, sorry, that the bigs were going to have a bit of a field day. This, this next one I want to bring up as well, mate. It's Elijah Hollands in his first game for his new club since coming across from Gold Coast. We know he had that two-match suspension. He's come in and had an immediate impact playing in the midfield, having 22 touches, five tackles for 115 super coach points. This yep. man is a 276K mid. Is, mm. is he worth a watch? He's definitely worth a watch, and I'm glad he got this game out of the way for his first where we can watch mm-hmm. the next game next Absolutely. week where he's on the bubble and we can actually see how he suits up against a, ga- a game where, you know, you're not already pretty much banking a win straight away from the start. So, for sure. um, yeah, but I'm definitely keeping the eye on him. That's for certain. Yep, that's right. Uh, Paddy Cripps, 28 touches, 100 super coach points, which he had, what, 130 got a couple of weeks ago. Before that, yep. he had 70. This game, he had 100. Very inconsistent and probably someone you want to stay away from as a premium. Jack Carroll overcame a slow start to score 65 from his 16 touches and did his own as a world of good with cash generation. Zach Williams looks as though he's slowly starting to get the speed and flow back into his game. He had 15 touches mm-hmm. for 70 super coach points. He is going to make us some good coin for the next few weeks. And for those of you that are contemplating trading him, I suggest you do not because mm-hmm. we're really lacking in backline defenders when we're talking cheap ones. Massimo D'Ambrosio has probably been the best of them, but we saw how quickly 123K defender in house went south and only scored 23. He'll come up later on in the episode. But for backline rookies who can score you 70 to 75 each game, they're worth their weight in gold at the moment. Yep. I thought he looked a lot better as well this week than prior weeks. Mm -hmm. Um, And that was against... North as well, where the ball wasn't down there as much. So I was very, very impressed. But for North Melbourne, um, Harry Shee's got, geez, he's done it again, hasn't he? Uh, 32 touches, 128. For anyone that questioned me and said, hey, I'd, what about Zach Fisher? What about Colin McCurch off the halfback line? Again, I don't give a stuff. You give the ball to LeBron James, you give it to the best player on the team. That's Sheasel. Um, pow, pow. Well, thank God we got him in, didn't we? Another yeah. 93 from 29 touches could have been a little bit better, but that's all right. A few turnovers, a bit of kick efficiency problems, but that's all right. Mate, he's he's all over that midfield, and he uh, he'll be a, he's generating his cash, so that's good. Uh, Tristan Zeri uh, had 13 touches, 32 hitouts, 90 super coach points. Don't mind that against the uh, Carlton Ruckman. Cobby McKercher, 19 touches for 74 super coach points. Will be a welcome mid defender when uh, mm-hmm. DPP comes out. Um, LDU, very, very disappointing. 27 touches. Um, he sparked a little bit late, but, yeah, it just wasn't going right for him today. Um, Zach Fisher, 20 touches for 70 points. <clears throat> he covered his break even, which is good, but, uh, yeah, I don't know if you want to We're hold moving him much longer. We're moving yeah. Him. yeah, yeah. Um, Xavier Dersma, only the seven touches for 29 super coach points. Mm-hmm. As we said in the past, he is going to be an unbelievably good player in time, but rookie forwards, very, very consistent, especially in a forward line like this. He pushes up the ground very, very well, but yeah. it's just not – it's not uh, for super coach right now. <laughs> pow, catalytic yeah. wire mixer. <laughs> yeah, I have to bring it up. Pow, pow. Absolutely. <laughs> and David Morgan, thanks for the love. Being, being in the Legend, social media, sometimes mate. we cop it, but it's because of guys like you that we love to take the piss and mm-hmm. make Supercoach fun. So thank you for joining us, mate. Oh, um, yeah. So yep. it's nice. Pow, pow. Really like his game. He got all the all the love in the middle yep. again. Um, it was just because they were spanked as to why he didn't go over 100, but he looks locked into their best four and looks to be playing a lot of his football through the midfield. Yep. Um, and Toby Pink, we didn't bring him up, but... He had a minus 30 break even, and at one stage there, it looked like he was going to miss it because he was at, what, minus 12, minus 13 at one stage with those two 50-meter penalties he gave away in a row. But he's he's still going to make your coin, but if you haven't got him, you're not bringing him in now because he definitely has a ceiling. Scorched Earth, you're absolutely right. The pink stinks. Hey, I told you guys, Titty is not – it's not super coach relevant. I know he's a good price, but there's – I mean, I know all the other options are injured, but he's yeah. still not a great option either. 
but unfortunately that's how it goes. Let's go and, on to – yeah, go on. Yep, just before oh. we go on, Choke, we will get to this at the end of the episode, mate, yep. about Libba and LDU, but disclaimer, you you will be wanting to hold Libba. No, Choke. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Marty Hall. Yep, Marty Hall. Yep. Um, Fremantle break away late in their game to maintain their perfect record, defeating Adelaide by 35 points in a sloppy contest over in Perth. Aiden fucking Young. Oh, my God. Did you know, can I can I just say one thing, right? So the points mm. that he scored in the first week, mm-hmm. 70, compiled yep. with the points that he scored in the second week, 63, yep. equal the points that he scored in the third week, 133. Unbelievable. Who saw this coming? Oh, mate. Like, the, the weird thing is as well, it's like he just played an unbelievable game and just did anything he wanted. But also, too, our man as well, who we said that was, you know, that has his role, also had a great game. So I guess it's mm-hmm. just, you know, this is what happens against Adelaide. Yep. Um, did you know that Hayden Young still missed his break even and he's going to stop uh, drop Un- potentially Unreal. 20K in cash? Yep. Yep. Mm-hmm. Unreal, isn't it? It's uh, – and, yeah, from such a great game. And then we, uh, we're just going to have to see how it goes this week. So, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, just going to have to keep rolling it. Yeah, Matt – oh, Shout out to our our mate, um, Super Coach Hawk, Robbie Kennedy, who used to do this show as well. He had the option of go, of dropping young or short, and he dropped young and kept short. Fuck, you be spewing. Spewing. Mm-hmm. Luke Ryan, very good again. 27 touches, 10 marks, 130 Super Coach points. And he's proving why he will be a top six defender by year's end. Sarong was a little quieter this game compared to his first two weeks. 28 touches, six tackles, 125 super coach points. He's still going to make you bulk cash. Jordan mm. Clark, we're not bringing him in for the cash. We're bringing him in because he's a keeper. Jordan oh, Clark, yeah. you you <laughs> called this a few weeks ago, mate. He's been mate. fucking awesome for the, those lads over at Frio. We did call this mm-hmm. a few weeks ago. It looks good coming out of defense for the Dockers. Another 26 touches and 119 super coach points. He's going to go up roughly 30K, which means he's still going to be at 470K this mm-hmm. week. As a cheaper premium option, are we interested? Very interested, mate. As we've said, um, he has the perceived of Hayden Young's role. So when mm-hmm. Hayden Young doesn't play the midfield, they still look for Jordan Clark. When Hayden Young is in the midfield, they still look for Jordan Clark, and his engine is unbelievable. I would mm-hmm. be pushing up those wings, going a bit higher as well. But every single time, mate, it just seems to be finding Jordan Clark, and he looks so good with it too. Yeah, doesn't he? Mm-hmm. Luke Jackson had 23 touches, 17 hitouts, 98 super coach points. While that doesn't stand out all that much, O'Brien is a hard ruckman to score against, so <laughs> that, that's a good score for Jackson. Yes. Uh, I think Bray that's Short. what everyone. Oh, sorry, I sorry. think that's what everyone got a little bit too worked up, and they were like, "Oh shit, Jackson! Oh no!" Like only only a ninety eight. But Riley O'Brien is such a good defensive ruckman. Oh, yeah. Him and him and Nank are like probably the hardest two that are actual defensive ruckmen to actually score against. Oh, yep, and, um, Hawthorne and the Hawks as well. Yep. yep, yep. So that's a good effort there by um by Jackson. Yep, Brayshaw twenty one touches, five tackles. Doesn't look. Back to his mm. premium type self, not really rating his game at the moment. He will drop coin. Sharp mm. had another 15 touches today for 71 super coach points. Uh, he's making us great coin, and we hold yep. him if we have him. Omira, mm. Jaeger, mm. the Jaeger bomb is an absolute bomb at the oh. moment. He's just a shadow of himself, isn't he? Seven touches, 20 super coach points. I'm aware that he was the sub, but gone are the days of him dominating in the midfield for the Gold Coast. He's gone to Hawthorne. Yeah. Yes, we knew he had knee issues, but he he looks shot now. He's lucky to get a game in yeah. Frio's team. But don't – they're probably the big improvers so far this year for me with the way they structure up, with the way they've got their run and carry out of defence. They know they need to get the ball in Ryan's hands. They know mm-hmm. they need to get the ball in Clark's hands. Um, mm-hmm. That young guy that came in for Fremantle, he was awesome. What, what's his name? The young uh, 120 – Draper. Like he's, yeah, just Draper, playing, yeah, yeah. he's just playing his role in there. Clancy Pierce was really, really good as well. So. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. And another name, um, Nat Fife. Just great to see him um, play out the whole game. He had a little bit less time on ground than he normally does, hence why he had a little bit of a lower score. Still mm-hmm. 21 disposals, still getting in it. But the fact that he ran out the whole game is a massive, massive green flag. Yeah. 
Now for Adelaide. Oh, yeah. Sorry, who's, Adelaide. Who's, yeah. who's this? Who's this keen bloke? You know what's really funny? So uh, me and our great sponsor Ryan from Astute News said it's been great, like being able to talk shit with him um, during Adelaide games because mm-hmm. he's a massive Adelaide supporter, and he was blaring Adelaide because they have some pretty good ball movements out of defence. They mm-hmm. had well, they had Malira before he just got injured, um, Brody Smith and Matty Hinch, and. We kept saying, why the hell is this keen bloke kicking every single ball and he was doing nothing with it last week? Well, he turns around this week and has 26 touches, 11 marks, and 118 super coach points. And he does all right, yeah. Yep, he's a 289K defense. Not a goddamn chance in the world am I bringing this bloke into my team and no one should either. Fremantle's forward line, as good as they looked, there's a reason why Tabernar was being dropped. There's a reason why they need Jackson to get back forward and Darcy to get into the ruck because they are not confident with the forwards that they bring out there besides Jai Miss. Yeah. So this Keen bloke actually had an actual chance. So, But mm-hmm. no way am I bringing him in or looking at no. him at all. Um, Rory Laird, just doing Laird things, 25 touches, seven tackles, 111 super coach points, throwing his weight around a little bit there against the smaller Fremantle mids. Uh, Matt Crouch continues to score well. But it is, I couldn't agree more that this is to the detriment of the team and Adelaide actually winning games. Yep. Um, 28 touches, 21 of them are handballs, 110 super coach points. From a super coach perspective, it was a bargain price. And, you know, it's rewarding the players that take the risk. But for supporters of Adelaide, they are calling for his head Absolutely because they are. he is doing stuff all to help them win. He turns, he turns their midfield into a one-paced unit. Mm-hmm. It is burning Dawson. It is burning yep. Laird to an extent. It is shocking. And for those of you that have Crouch, congratulations. He's scoring well for you. But when you look on the outside or on the peripherals of it all, he gets the ball. He, his first, second, and third options are to handball. Yep. He doesn't look to kick it. When he kicks, he kicks it short or he's kicking long to a 50-50. He can't pierce targets down the ground. Yes, he does find the ball a lot, but... He's not damaging with it at all. And no. Adelaide are finding it really hard to get attacking when the ball goes through his hands, hence why they've been really poor to start the year. So even though he is scoring well and he is getting a lot of the ball, and people may call me crazy for saying this, but there's a chance he may get dropped in the coming weeks. I, I could not agree more, mate. It's When he gets the ball, they do need someone to go to that contested ball unless mm-hmm. like Laird is actually – something's wrong with Laird and he can't actually do it yet. but. He gets the ball, handballs it to an Adelaide player, and it's either to an Adelaide player that then has to go backwards or yep. on the stop start, or it's to the opposition that's running Absolutely. through to an open goal. Yeah. Yeah. He's, 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 he's has nailed this. He's perfect for 20 years ago. He's oh, a Diesel Williams, top. mate. 30 years yep. ago. Yep. 100%. Um, so, Jordan Dawson going to yeah. drop huge coin. Uh, 27 touches, and he looks all right, but only 68 super coach points. It's in a direct effect of Crouch being back in the side. Hopefully, he will tidy up his def- uh, disposal efficiency. And when that price falls, oh, yeah, I am jumping right on Jordan Dawson. He was taking the PI double five last year. Yeah, for, for those of you that follow Scobie Bryant, Nathan Scoble on Twitter, he's done some quick maths. He's managed to work out the super coach scoring system. And we anticipate that Dawson will be roughly priced at 550k in two weeks' time. That's Ooh. probably our time to jump straight after, not straight after, sorry, um, gather around, probably the week after. But let's wait and see what happens yep. with Crouch first and whether they continue to play him or not. Yes, sir. S- Skitty. Ooh. You in the suit? You're in the Super Coach World Cup. How are you going there? Uh, yeah. Oh, well, I got a. Th- Thousand and fifty or something like that in the NRL. So, and I captained Hammer. So apparently that was good. Says Braino and Whisperer. So I was pretty happy with that. I'm that team shit. <laughs> I, I, I captained that Heinz bloke. But if you ever thought that you're elite <laughs> super coach, now you can prove it with our year round insight fantasy sports super coach world cup, featuring all four super coach sports in NRL, AFL, NBL, and BBL. It's twenty bucks to enter. And entries cut off at the buy rounds. Not these buy rounds. The buy rounds mid year. Mm-hmm. Your rankings will be calculated together with the best performer over the four sports combined. 
and that person will take out the best super coach player in the world. We are the only organization that runs this type of competition. Join our Discord to find out more. Hey, you've right. got to highlight Deadly's comment as well. <laughs> What's he done there? Uh, if Hamo has to watch Crouch again, I think his mustache might go grey. The best mustache <laughs> in the biz might be going grey. With the with the rest of him. Yeah. Uh, D- Dave Steves, before we move on from Adelaide, hold or fold Dawson this week. Oh. Mate, for me, gather round. The pressure's right on Adelaide. I think you'll find that they will make some changes there. I anticipate that he'll... Remember last year when they played Carlton and they just smacked the pants off him over there? Yeah. I, yeah. I reckon he's in for 120-ish this week. He just needs to clean up his disposal efficiency. I can say it too, but shit, it's against the Ds and they played so well against Port Adelaide. So, yeah. And they did negate Butters and Rosie pretty well. So, I mean, look, I would, if you have him right now, I would hold. I wouldn't burn a, way, a, a trade on um, getting rid of Dawson. And I think that Crouch is surely going to be on the outs. If you, I reckon yeah, you hold uh, for another week. And yeah, I think you just kind of got to roll with it at this moment. But if you've got yeah, the trades in hand, then maybe you do look at it. But yeah. if you see Crouch go out of the team, you're jumping for joy and you know you're going to get a good one from Dawson. Absolutely. But, Horsey, we have to get stuck into, I know the game that you want to talk about more than anything else in the world because your Bombers have done it. They've come from behind. Jake Stringer with a great shoe to win the game and they beat the St. Kilda Saints who were rolling. And let's be honest here, Saints should have be- should have beaten you. They missed some pretty easy goals. They looked pretty good early. They just mm-hmm. couldn't capitalize. But in fairness to Essendon, their defensive structure hold back. They had a massive game from Martin and they were able to overcome when they got it down forward. So there's, I'll let there's you just, talk about the Bombers. <laughs> there's one way that I can describe the Bombers, mate. Sometimes it may be good, sometimes it may be shit. <laughs> we were shit to start with, but they got the defensive structure right and end up winning that game by, what was it, four points? It was great. Four points, Exciting. Yeah. Um, not good for the sphincter, but we live to fight. <laughs> Austin Happel, 139 Supercoach points, underrated so far this year. He's been ordinary the last couple of years, but looks back to being his usual self across the back line. 30 disposals, 12 marks. This is probably his best game that he's played in years. Yeah. I don't trust it. But the next guy, Nick Martin. So I've copped a bit of shit with this guy being, oh, he's not good. You need to trade him off, yada, yada, yada. 136 super coach points, 44 touches, with his, which is a new Bombers record. Had it on a string all day long. Went at 75% efficiency, which is what we said he'll go out this year. Mm. You've got to be stoked if you held. If you if you sold him, don't be too disappointed because I believe he's still going to drop a little bit of cash. But yep. he's, he's not going to get your 130s every week. But yep. I ain't yet your 100 to 110s if he plays like this moving forward. I think also, too, a lot of people were getting down, including myself, but I'm pretty sure a lot of people were in the same wavelength of me as where we sideways Martin to Powell, and I still think that's the right call with Powell being able to go up the coin. We have a shitload of Essendon bloody love in the um, yeah, don't we? In the chat. Um, yep. Flagged on. Kizza saying, shoulda, coulda, woulda. All right, Kizza. Yeah. <laughs> Get off that high um, check next. And... Josh Drains, again, the super coach uh, whisperer. Nick Martin is a flak track bully. No, <laughs> he is, but he isn't, mate. But if you'd like me to come on the NRL show and give you a few tips on how to score well, mate, just uh, just let me know. You've got me yeah, number. Mate, I, I told you Hammer was going to go huge. That's an easy captain. Oh. I, I believe you thought it was going to be Nico. See, see for <laughs> Hammer time. Anyway, so Merritt, 131 super coach points. Another great game for the bomber skipper. Mm-hmm. We may have to get used to scoring like this because he just yeah. he has it on a string and he uses it so well, doesn't he? Yeah, he could. I, I'm genuinely looking at him to bring him in. Yep. He's been looking fantastic. Yep. And so is this guy, Andy McGrath, 110 super yep. coach points, really consistent across the back line. Um, it was Nick Martin's day, but still 30 touches. Uh, Saints high half forwards were pretty non existent, weren't they? Yeah. What the hell happened? Like they just allowed McGrath and, well, I, I, and I think it was Martin to do. I think it was a product of having the likes of Liam Henry and Mason Wood and uh, yep. Rossi Lyon having to plug a few holes. So, And then, remember, Max King wasn't there. And I know Essendon, they didn't have set a field and it was Parrish's first game back and mm-hmm. Durham got subbed off and Peter Wright was out. But Yep. 
both sides, they both didn't have their best teams. But as I say, you can only play what you, with what you've got on the track. So Parrish, 80 super coach points from 26 touches. I like seeing this because that will mean his price will drop and he'll be yep. able to look to bring him in later down the track. Just say, the it, it was at 58%. That is why Parrish had such a shit score. He's obviously yeah. better than that. He's normally a career like 78%, uh, percent, I believe. Yeah, so that's right. He will rise. So, so uh, Jack Steele, 126 super coach points. If you picked oh. him to start the year, you'd be stoked. Just super consistent. Seven yep. tackles is very encouraging as well. Mm -hmm. So he's, he's not afraid to get his body uh, mm -hmm. in and dirty, I guess, and cop the bumps. Talk to me about yeah. the Stiffy, the boner. Oh, mate. The big boner, he's just come out and done it again, hasn't he? 32 touches, nine marks. If you can tell me that he was going to have more of the ball off halfback each week, that would be absolutely fantastic because it's just going one in, one out. So don't know about that. But also, too, the big the big swing, swing and wang, um, <laughs> our boy. Uh, yeah. 91 super coach points from only 20 disposals. He got burnt like crazy in this game. Mm -hmm. So much times they halted their run because they just go for a long bomb instead of getting it to uh, the big wang. So that was a little bit annoying. Um, honestly, there's a good chance that next week the big wang will have 30 and Bona will have like 20. So they're just kind of chopping and changing. It's uh, it's a pretty hard one to read mm -hmm. how they're actually trying to go about it. But um, we don't have to worry about this guy, Jack Sinclair, 89 super coach points. He played a lot of midfield time, which is very encouraging for Wang and Boner owners. Um, his price is going to drop, and we can really make a move on that. He doesn't look 100% mm -hmm. there yet. No, still um, getting his legs back. Exactly right. So, But how about uh, how about Marshall, big horse? Only 79 super coach points for Romo? Mm -hmm. I like Don't it. Know. Yeah. Five frees against really killed him, and he only had – 50% disposal efficiency. It's a yeah, that's uh that's a not a not a good one there for Romo, but and he, he was better. He was on 34 super coach points three quarters of the way through the first quarter, too. Yeah, he had a really hot start and then just went to absolute mm -hmm. shit. So mm -hmm. uh not good for him. But um Darcy <laughs> Wilson, 25 super coach points, um, did nothing and then got absolutely towed by Xavier Dersma. Dersma absolutely killed him. I don't. I think he just outsmarted him in fairness because Darcy's a good runner, but Dersma was just in the right areas and he had an absolute ripping game. Wilson will still make some coin, so we don't have to worry about that. And then Hasty, he mm -hmm. was subbed on very very late, but we can see how close he is to getting games there. Yep, I'm a little worried just with how many outs it took for him to actually get the sub vest. But I mean, mm -hmm. he's what is he 117 k or something like that? Yeah, he, he looked he looked all right when he came on. Yeah, he did, but uh, I don't I don't think he did enough to be able to keep the spot. Or if he does, then he's just going to be another sub vest. So I'm just kind of a little bit, yep. yeah. Wait, I have to wait yep. and see about that, mate. But enough about you know talking about how good your boners uh, your boners are and your wangs are and how good your bombers are. Let's talk about probably one of the games of the round in Port Adelaide versus Melbourne, because this was a banger. I'm not ready to move on. Nah, we're moving on. I'm, no. I'm pulling rank. Sue Larky. <laughs> Should he hold Martin or go Martin to Green? Tom Green? Oh, let's say yes. Yes. Because it's not going to be Tom Toby Green. Green. Get You're going, in Tom Green. You're going Tom Green. Yeah. Oh, yeah, Tom. Tom Green is going to be one of the best super coach players that we're going to have this year. I am very confident in saying that. He's going to be the pig. He's going to be and, Curry Oliver-esque. And Dave Steeds, Boner or the package? If you had to pick one to go for a frothy with, who are you picking? Boner, 100%, oh, every single time I'm, of the week. I'm messing with supporter and I'm picking Boner as well. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck that other mate, guy. And mate, Kizza, I'm, dro I'm dropping I thought it was the Essendon Rowan. Insight Show as well, mate. So Skiddy's <laughs> making me move on. But hey, maybe maybe one week, Kizza, you can get on for a special and you can go with horse if you win the flag and I'll piss off out of here because I don't want to listen to that shit. Oh, Super Lucky's just gone. He could go five to Heaney. I'd be doing that. 100%. 100%. Uh, Port versus if you, Melbourne. Actually, if you could hold to after gather end and then their buy and then get him in after that, that'd be huge. Maximize five's coin and then get Heaney. We've had some ripping games this round, this round but what about this one? 
Edge of your seat, tight footy, and the D's come out on top with a seven-point win over the Power, who were heavy favourites in this one. Mm-hmm. Power had more of the pill, but the D's just stood tall and were more efficient, weren't they? Of course, they had 80 more disposals than the D's, and they mm-hmm. just bit the D's back line. No May, and they still looked incredible. Yeah. And, yeah, um, Deadly, you said it right, mate. Why the fuck do we not own Max Gorn? Jesus. Yeah, yeah, well, it's coming now, but please, if you haven't yet, please hit like, subscribe, put the bell yeah. on, triple bang that stuff. Give us a five-star review as well if you like our stuff on all good audio platforms. Willem Drew, I keep calling him William Woo! because I've just heard no one call anyone Willem nope. in the history of mankind. But anyway, 135 Willem. again this week after his 144 last week, 25 mm-hmm. touches and 11 tackles. They let this bloke off the tagging roll, and he is flying, mate. Mate. This is unbelievable. I am so worried and cannot bring him in purely because of the fact that I am worried they're going to put him on a tag again. But mm-hmm. they didn't tag Clary. They didn't tra- tag track. They just let Willem do his thing. And again, he is absolutely killing it. I don't know, Mick. <laughs> he's got he's got me interested. I'll tell you that much. He looks all right, doesn't he? And mm-hmm. then we got, what, Houston? 105 super coach points, 18 touches off half back and just keeps rolling. Was a bit underutilized, but hopefully he drops a little bit of coin so we can bring him in. Butters and Rosie, 26 touches each, 102 for Rosie and 98 for Butters. Both just did what they do. Uh, mm-hmm. Both will have um, – their, their scoring will improve is what I want to say. Yeah. Like, they yes, they're getting a lot of the ball, but this game – you know, Rosie's had these 102 to 105 to 108 games his first three weeks. I'm one of the people that hold him, and I am in no way, shape, or form going to sell him or try and go sideways because it's going to take one week where these 102s, 105s turn into 130s for Rosie. That's just the type of player that he is. 100%. That purely, the only reason that they were 98 and 102 was because Melbourne's back line was so bloody good. Marty Hoare and Jake Lever, I'm pretty sure, had like 17 intercept marks between them or something like that. It was just outrageous. So yeah. it's going to be better for them. Uh, Connor Rosie was on five super coach points from eight touches at quarter time as well. Mm-hmm. So got to take yep. that into consideration, take that out. And he scored effectively a hundred in three quarters of footy. Ollie wines, toot, 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 toot the fuck out of here. <laughs> Another 90 plus. I'm starting to get, yeah, I don't, I don't think he's um, going to be a primo this year. No, neither do I. Horse. I'm just getting worried because he always starts badly. You know, this, you know, mm-hmm. you said it last year and, Countless times. He always starts bad until about round eight or nine or something like that. Then he comes home, yeah. He has not gone under 90 this season. So what does that mean? That he's going to start pumping out 130s or he's going to start pumping out 50s? So I'm leaning the latter, especially because Jason Hod Francis is in there. I'm not sold because, yep, that – and he's still not getting the time in the midfield. It's Drew, it's Butters, it's Rosie. Mm Mm-hmm. That's another thing that worries me about Willem is that Jason Horn Francis is in there, even though I think Drew is bloody good for what they're trying to do. But we go for the uh we go for the D's and yep, let's get absolutely uh let's get the big one out of the way because Maxi Gorn has done it again. The cruiser drinking, dart smoking, absolute legend that he is. 20 disposals, 50 hit outs. I yeah, that's a lot, I, isn't it? I should have. I, I said to a mate, I'm like, Gorn's going to have a massive game here. And they go, Why do you reckon that? I'm like, Because what the hell's Soldo going to do to stop him? And I just, for some reason, just I had other spot fires, couldn't bring him into my team. So that's annoying. Dominated absolutely all over the ground. Just so bloody good. I think I, ha- I just think I have to get him in. I just mm-hmm. have to now. Um, Alex Neil Bullard, geez, it, this is about. I think he's done this two or three times this year already, but 134 super coach points, two goals, mm-hmm. 24 disposals. Roll is very, very super coach friendly on that high half forward and mm-hmm. the forward defensive pressure kind of role Absolutely. that he's running. He has a little bit of on ball time as well. Keep a massive watch out for this because he's what I've noticed is he was playing, he's not playing as a center half forward, but he starts center half forward. And then whichever side the ball goes to, he's the one that's running into the contest and playing defensive pressure role while Billings is pushing back forward and looking as the link-up option. This is very, very encouraging what Alex Neil Bullen is able to do in the role that he is providing in the Melbourne midfield. I mean, forward line. Absolutely. Couldn't Mm -hmm. agree more. 
sex track. Um, yep, get into it. I know you love your sex track. Oh, I love love the man. I can't wait for Melbourne versus St Kilda. Bit of sex track, bit of big boner, bit of the big, big wang. Oh, oh boy. Just get around it. 23 touches. He was a quick bit quieter by his standards. Port Smiths dominated the ball and clearances. Clary Oliver, only a 92 after his, what was it, 191 break even that he had. Yep. He's going to drop huge coin again. He's There's a chance he might be under 600 this week. So let's watch that space. Uh, Windsor, a little bit better this week. 56 super coach points, a goal from 12 touches. I don't think it's quite time to get off him. Melbourne have a buy in what two weeks time, three weeks time. Yes. Yeah. So it's gathered around. They play. Then it's their buy. Okay. I think we could probably hold him for two more weeks and then move him on, Fair. unless Fair. there's better options going. Uh, Marty Hall, fifty-two super coach points. We did say that he will have a prominent role. Fifty-two is not great, but as a one hundred and twenty-three k defensive option, he's definitely a downgrade option. Billings, forty-two. You and I said it. He mm-hmm. just. We were fading him right from the start. We didn't believe in it. And the proof is in the pudding. He got subbed off and is a massive chance to get dropped this week. And mm. Howes, after being on zero at half time, he's still making <laughs> cash. 26 super coach points he made. He had a bigger role without May there, but just he just wasn't used. So yeah, I'm not it was overly sl- concerned just yet. Yeah, he was locked down while May yep. wasn't there. So I'm not too worried about it. But yep. get on to the game of the round, horse. You're talking about Essen and St Kilda again? No, <laughs> no, mate. Right. The bloody Bevo screw job again. Western Bulldogs oh. versus the West Coast Eagles. Dogs just absolutely dominated the Eagles after half a quarter time. Fair to the Eagles, they were very much showing some absolute great football in the first quarter, but then they went to shit. Um, mm-hmm. They dogs just went through the motions. Um, funny that the uh, the dogs were actually. Killed in the clearances by the Eagles for the whole game. Pretty sure they lost by eight. But, geez, the Dogs' defensive backline structure looked absolutely sensational, mate. Um, yeah. Tingles. Now, this was annoying. So, T- if anyone knows Bevo, mm. can you please tell him to sort his shit out? Oh, please. my God. This this killed us the, so Tingles much. Tingles in the forward line. You know, you know what? I was having to think about it. If he continues to do this for the next couple of weeks mm. and English and Bontempelli play Ford a lot, is there a chance they get DPP, Ford, Ruck or Ford mid? Now, how good would that be? But mm. we did actually end up finding out what the reason for Bontempelli's forward line was. Ankle? No. So the ankle dash syndesmosis injury, whatever the hell that was, apparently there was an agreement between him and Bebo that he was, even though he, he trained as a midfielder during the week. Our Bulldogs insider told us that Bontempelli was training as a midfielder for the week, but there was a conversation between him and Bevo that Bont said, look, I might be a little bit underdone. Do you mind if I play a bit more forward this game? Bevo's like, yep, no worries. So Bont was pretty much resting the game, but still, you know, comes out and has a 110 super coach points. So I guess we'll take it. Hopefully this doesn't last long and he can get back in the midfield and be in the stud that he is. Yep. Um, yeah, Timmy English, 17 disposals, 24 hitouts, two goals, 107 at three-quarter time, and then Bevo plays him as a goddamn full forward. Oh, God, that shit me up the wall, and it only makes me a little bit more worried about Sam Darcy. Um, we go to, well, 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 would you look at that? Another great game from Jason Johanniston <laughs> and Herbie's yes. fucking not here again. Unbelievable. Yeah. I don't know how much beer he owes me, but I know we made that bet and he's gone 94, 98, now 104. So Herbie yeah. owes me something. Um, uh, he and Bramble also very good off the halfback flank. Um, 98 super coach points for him, 104 for uh, Johannesson is again. Um, both of them just absolutely taking the piss off halfback. They are just running, 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 and they are mm-hmm. consistently getting yeah, it are. done. Um, yeah, Bramble's price rise and being the defender mid uh, DPP is just fantastic. Libba was subbed off at three quarter time, had 98 super coach points. Don't think there's anything there to be worried about whatsoever. No. Just, just that they were killing them. Buku Karmas, mate. How about this? 82 super coach points. Looks really, really solid down back. 
Um, I'm pretty sure he's like 100. Is he 123k forward or he's around? He was. Yep. He was. Um, I think the thing that we were worried about was will he actually play back? Because he played forward last year. He has that that backline role cemented now. So I price changes have just come up and oh, nice. Thomas has just gone up 58.1k. Is it nice. 182k now? Nice. Well, that's um, that's fantastic. But you know, it's still around <laughs> a price that you can make. So, because yeah. mate, I don't think Keith mate, like takes his spot. I think he looks that good. No, I'm I'm all about the Bukaki Parky, which is oh, uh, Bucky Of course, of so, course, of course. <laughs> if you've got him, well done. But at 182k, if he's going to score you 100. Oh, sorry, 82 Super Coach points each round, oh. and hold his spot. There's just for me, there's too much doubt. Yeah. So no, I I can agree there. I, I Kids are coming that. in. Bramble's yeah. now up to 347, up 55K this week. So if yeah. you listen to me that I didn't have the balls to do two weeks ago, well done. Um, Zinger, uh, bit, of, bit of supercharge on this fella, 77 super coach points. He got the midfield, um, some CBAs with McRae in the side, which is super, super encouraging. Mm-hmm. Um, and then we go to Jack McRae, 59 super coach points. From twenty disposals. Imagine you started the year with him; uh, you'd be absolutely fucking spewing. He's still got over fifty percent CBAs. It was very, very underwhelming. I think he looks very. Get that yeah. out of here. I like it. Uh, yeah, he looks so underdone and just looks like he doesn't have the right role in this dog's team. Looks, yeah, I, I don't. Yeah, I don't know what else to say about him. Sam Darcy. Now I this up. Oh, you got minus ninety two break even. Love that, but God, this it's this scared the shit out of me of what happened in this game, right? Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I'm still probably going to bring him in, obviously, because he's going to make a shitload of coin. Fifty four super coach points. He had eleven hitouts, eleven disposals, kicked a goal. He's on the bubble this week. He played the whole last quarter of rucking, and he got smacked by Bailey Williams, who gets smacked by every single other uh, Ruckman in the AFL. He's showed signs, but, geez, that really scared me. I'm still going to take the coin because I don't think there's many other forwards that we can realistically look at at the moment that Mm. are in the kind of category as Darcy. I'm going to do some research, but that scared the crap out of me. And all Mm. I can say is let's hope that Bevo keeps the cone out of the team for at least two more weeks. (laughs) <laughs> yep, the overgrown Ellen DeGeneres should stay in the twos, hopefully. The cone! For the Eagles! He did kick um, five, by the way. Yeah, no, nah, fuck him. They can stay in the twos. I so, hope so too. Jeremy McGovern, goal. yep. Jeremy McGovern, 120 supercoach points. Um, yeah, they would be absolutely stuffed if they didn't have him. I would love to pick him, but his body's just not good. So yeah. I think I think it's a safe fade because you just don't know when That's- the man is going to break. That's three hundred and twenty pluses in a row, though. Yep, and he's not even the best back I'm going to talk about today either. No, he's not. <laughs> uh, Tim Kelly, one hundred and four super coach points, played a great game inside. Mm-hmm. Twenty eight disposals, seventeen contested possessions. Looks a lot better, but still not an option. Mm-hmm. Elliot, you, yo, eighty two super coach points. Look really good inside. Twenty nine disposals, five tackles. Score was oh. asked because he was going at forty five percent disposal efficiency. Mm. No, I'm not bringing him in if I don't have him. No, uh, no, no. Harley Reid, 54 super coach points. I like his game. Like he throws his body yeah. around really well for a rook. Um, played mm. on Libra at times, so he's just going through a learning experience. Uh, yeah. Still showed signs, and I'm happy to hold on him at the moment. The rest of the Eagles may make a bit of an appearance in our cold episode later <laughs> in the show. But Mate. They need, yeah, they need some players. Some of them yeah. are shit. <laughs> In the what I thought was perhaps one of the upsets of the round. Yep, I could say that. Phil, uh, turn off now, buddy. This is not – or skip maybe 10 yep. minutes or so. Yeah, <laughs> or if you're a Sydney Swans supporter and you want to hear us rag out on your team, hit like, subscribe, and flick the bell on. <laughs> we would love that. But Bravo. anyway, the, the Tigs come over the top of Sydney and oh. get them in a nail-biter to win their first game of the year. 
Nicholas Velasquez. Oh my! Wow, <laughs> mate, this was un fucking real performance. One one hundred and sixty-seven super coach points, twenty-nine touches, thirteen marks. Just outworked all of the Swans forwards and looked like there was three of them. He is an absolute option. Yeah, you know who he reminds me of? Go. Better version of James Sicily. Oh. Like, he looks that he's, like, his ability to intercept Mark, they're trusting him with kickings, they're trusting him when they're switching ball movements, and they're going from side-to-side play and everything like that. Mate, he looks absolutely unreal. And I think he's got the ability to do it. And as Kiz has got in our comments, Vlashtuan scored 77 in the fourth quarter alone. Yep. Timmy Taranto was much better this week, but he's still going to drop coin, 128 super coach points, mm-hmm. 35 touches. His positioning at stoppages was much improved, but he's not an option yet. Correct. Shy Bolton. Here he is after his three games. Pops out yep. his 100, like we said. Yep, there it is. Best name. Uh, um, yeah, outpaced the Swans, but we know how up and down he can be. He's still going to lose coin. Didn't make his break even, so let's see how we go there. Jaden Short. See ya. Fuck him up. Play the soundbite. Do we need to talk about him? Play the soundbite. Yeah, okay. Get that garbage <laughs> out of here. I've had enough of this bullshit. He had the right role. He had the right everything to be able to like be good. He's got the good disposal, good run and everything. Like and you know what's happened? They've realized that they don't need him. They are happy using Nick Velastrian to be able to to be able to do it all. Um, he's dropping serious coin. Um, yeah, no, nah, no thanks. Yep. But how about Brown Horse? I actually like him more than what I like Sam Darcy. Mm. I thought the exact same thing. I'm just worried and about job security. Job security? Mm, I don't think it's going to be bit. an issue now because, as we'll find out in our injury report yes. later, Lynch out for 10 to 12 weeks. Mm-hmm. Bolter out three to five weeks. Mm-hmm. I think they're going to start pumping games in the kids. I was trying to who figure they, it out because who obviously they got to come that. Back? Well, Dylan, Dylan they got Grant. Dusty. Yeah, because Dusty didn't play. Um, Dylan Grant. So I was I was thinking about it and I'm like, well, they've lost two key, two key position players, right? So they'll probably mm-hmm. have Miller go back down forward like they did last year, but I think they could also just play Dusty, like, why could you not? He he can definitely present himself against bigger opponents and then outspeed them and then use his body against the smaller guys and still keep up with them. So, yeah, my, I mean, my Sam- process early on is that Ben Miller's going to go forward. Yep. Um, Samson Ryan maybe in. Yeah. Yeah, I think Miller presents a little more, a little more I than think what so. Samson Ryan does. And yeah. then Dylan Grimes will come back in, and that will keep um, our man Brown his spot. But you know someone I do rate? Who's that? Seth Campbell. So do I. But tell me about him. Do you want me to talk to you like this when we talk about Seth Campbell? Oh, a little bit of Seth Campbell. He's so good. <laughs> I know he only scored 43 yeah. Supercoach points, but this man can play. He's very smart with a pill, and I don't know why he scored more because he he didn't score more because he did a lot of good things in this game, and oh, yeah. he will continue to get games. Yep. Um, I've got this man in there purely because from a Richmond point of view, they are struggling with healthy bodies. Mm-hmm. Lafau, our Kiwi Lafau. mate from across the ditch. Mm-hmm. Uh, 39 super coach points. He only had three touches but kicked two goals, 102K mid. So if you're looking to downgrade for someone that's on the bubble, I think he is going to play next week. I think he's going to make some quick coin for you. I'm just mm-hmm. not sure on the longevity of his spot in the side. Yep, I can agree with that. I don't think he's going to have massive super coach score upside or anything like that, but he'd still be able to make you about 100K or so because I think, you know, about 40, I reckon that's probably about him. Yeah. Yep. I like someone a little bit more upside, but that's all right. Swannies, yeah. what can we say? There's no way, no way now that horse – can move Isaac Heaney back to the forward line. He's too goddamn good. Must stay midfielder if he does it. Horse, Longmuir, Longmire, whatever the fuck you flyer. This is. one's a Longmire. Um, yep. Yep, Longmire. Um, no, he's he's just too bloody good. He's playing absolutely out of his mind. 
still just rising in price too, which is unhurt, like under level. So keep him in. He may be 600K next week. It's unbelievable how well he's going. So, geez, 600K for Heaney. Just sounds unbelievable, doesn't it? Um, Mm -hmm. Brody Grundy, 114 Supercoach points, solid game, but... It was against Nank, again, one of the hardest ruck battles um, to come up with in the AFL. He had 21 hitouts, but geez, his around the ground work was absolutely fantastic. Pretty sure he had like, I think he had 17 handballs or something like that. So it actually shows yeah. that he was still able to get down and get it. So that was good. Yep. Matty Roberts, how about this for a game for someone that we just wanted as a bit of a cash gen? 98 super coach points, 27 disposals. Best game easily. He had great run. Looking way more confident with the ball now and being able to find his teammates. So yep. uh, that I, was fantastic. I watched this game, mate, and they were actually looking for him to dispose yeah. the ball outside of D50. Yep, I noticed that as well. They were looking – like even Blakey at times was looking sideways to go to Roberts on his wing. Mm-hmm. They were actually fully confident with using him. So gives me great confidence as well. Someone I was not confident in and that really shit me up the wall is the bleached arsehole, and that's Chad G- Dan Warner. 73 super coach points. He played such an offensive minded game. It was a goddamn disgrace watching him out there. I thought he was horrible for the whole game. Wasn't running back hard, was just jogging back, wasn't helping out his teammates, only was trying to like push the ball when it was going forward. Yeah, no, I thought I thought the bleached arsehole had an absolute shocker. And I don't yeah, don't like saying that, especially when you're putting your teammates under more pressure than uh than not. Um yeah. Errol Goulden. 73 super coach points, 25 disposals. <laughs> I think this is starting to be a thing, though, horse. He played a shit house first half and then came absolutely exploding home because I'm pretty sure he went, I think it was eight or nine disposals in the first half and then he finished on 25. So he had about 16 in the second half, something along those lines. So, um, it's yeah, he's done it the last two weeks as well. So, one to be watching there on Gordon. He only had a 62 disposal efficiency, so he'll definitely be better for that. Um, James Jordan, quieter from him, still making his coin at the moment. So uh, keep on holding that. Richmond just really shut that side of the ground down very, very nicely. Their pressure was unbelievable. Jordan wasn't able to step up to it. And uh, Mitchell, in his first game, 28 super coach points. Um, we've got to trust our Sydney people. They say he's a jet, so keep an eye on him. I didn't see much from him this game. Apparently, he trained the track down, so he's uh, he's got the engine and everything like that, but this was a bit of a stinker, and uh, decision-making is definitely not there yet, but he'll be better for it. Uh, thanks to our president of or manager of Discord Operations, Kizza, Roberts has still has a negative 28 break-even and has made Ooh. us 120K in two Ooh. weeks. You know what? I'm not even looking to sell him at this point. It may be a no, season neither. trade for me, but come DPPs in round six, we're going to have someone that we can swing into our back lines. So this is going to be fantastic. Yep. If he keeps rolling the way he is, I'm going. I was always planning to piss him off at buy at their buy round. I think I still might keep him. Yep. And this is Heaney, 591k with the 63 break even. He He's will be over 600k next week. That is. If, if we had spoken about that in the preseason, that Heaney would be 600K <laughs> by the time their buy, or their buy round comes along in round six, round five, round six, people would either question us as, one, how drunk are we, or two, we're out of our mm-hmm. fucking minds. But this well, man has probably been top five in the AFL so far this season. Oh, couldn't agree more. F- fun, like, funny enough, though, we have copped that on many other players that end up being right, a couple that were wrong. And I remember me and you were both saying it in the preseason where we said, oh, you know, Heaney, if he can play midfield, you know, we should be able to make a little bit of coin. He's going to do pretty well. Shit, we didn't expect this. This is outrageous. And Scorched Earth, Robertson McKercher will be DPP? Yes. Yep. Round, round six, mate, that should roll around for us. McKercher has not played – McKercher has played a, like a, so much of his time defender. So, yes, he will um, get that. Kizzer, if you don't mind, Mike, can you tell me what Grundy – is up to and now he's break even because I think I have to go to Gorn. Thanks, buddy. Horse, do you want to talk to us about Geelong and Hawthorne? A bit of lightning. Yeah, a bit of lightning getting around. But shout out, shout out to the big Tomahawk, 350. Been a sensational career for the big fella there. He's been unbelievable. So well done. Good. But his friend Mitchie Duncan 
controlled the back line for Geelong today. 26 touches, 100 supercoach points. Tommy Stewart sent a scare through the supercoach community after he went down, after being kneed in the back of the head by Mubby Archol. Came back on the score 99, which cost me my game against supercoach Whisperer. I went down to him by three points. I'm sure he's still listening. And, yes, I am frustrated. <laughs> Ollie Dempsey had 22 touches and rewarded those that went with him. For a well earned 86. Maxie Holmes a little quieter today, but still finished on 85 super coach points. Toby Conway. Here yes. we go. Yeah, we got so, one. We got as, one on the hook, boys. As <laughs> Asadoxian. Wow. Mm. He did say at the start of the year, this is a man that we need to keep an eye on. 83 super coach points against the ruck killers in Hawthorne. He looks really good today. And he's what impressed me most from him is not his ruck work because he was tapping it to advantage, but his ability to follow up his ball and lay tackles or, yep. you know, a couple of times he's done the quick handball up off the ground. I really like that. I like it too. He looks pretty bloody uncoordinated. I will definitely say that. And he needed a fairly long spell. I think it was at the end of the first or second quarter. But either way, I don't care. He has, he definitely has my attention. I've heard about this guy for a while that, about the jet, sorry, the engine that he has. Um, but yeah, I'm definitely keeping him on the radar. Jessa Cameron. Yep. Just sorry, before you, you do go, go ahead on. with behind, uh, the arc. behind the arc, Billings and Wines to Sam Darcy and another primo. Yes. Oh, I'll yeah, look. 100%. Mate, go get yourself Matty Rail or Tuke Miller. Yep. Now, yeah, fuck, fuck Billings off. Yep. 100%. Yep. <laughs> I saw Billings and I just went, yeah, get rid of him. Yep. Uh, <laughs> uh, Jesse Cameron with his second quiet game in a row, 16 touches, two goals, 62 super coach points. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, Tomahawk's pushing up the ground more, which is really, really strange and weird, but no worries. That's just how they're going to run it. Um, Hawks, James Warple led the way for Hawks. Massive 148 super coach points. Pretty sure he had about mm -hmm. 60 in the last quarter as well. So, Bloody impressive because he is taking this guy's role. Jai Newcomb, still not great, but better than what he has been because obviously 85 is better than 60-odd. Um, Jai Newcomb has dropped 45K. Woo, geez. From and he's still got a break even of 140 next round. Oh, my God. We're going to be watching for that. That's for certain. I mean, mm -hmm. even though, like, shit, it still hasn't been great, but you expect for him to bounce back, really. Mm -hmm. Um, Sicily, 89 from his 16 touches and looks to drop massive coin in the next few weeks. If you did notice, when Sicily was starting to score worse, Hawthorne were actually playing a lot better. So, as we said a couple of weeks ago, this is just hand in hand, we believe. Um, mm -hmm. Massimo, quietest game as a Hawk today, 16 touches. Did he only have 16 in the end? Yep. Oh, shit. I thought he did better than that. Um, for 66 super coach points. Not worried about it. Geelong just looked a lot better. He was stuck on the fat side, and Geelong really, really abused the other side of the wing. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, I wouldn't be worried too much about that at no. at all. He'll still continue to make his coin. Absolutely. Now, speaking of moustaches that are going grey. Oh, here it is. Ryan from New Seustead. Astute Newstead, sorry. Are you wanting <laughs> to buy that first time or even investment property and don't know how? Are you a current owner with an interest rate above 6.2%? Well, Ryan can guarantee you that he can absolutely find better options for you. And the best part is he'll do it for free. Down below after this episode finishes, his link to his link tree will be there. Click on that, send him a message, and he will help you out. No obligations attached. Now. You can, all, you can also catch him in our Discord during Adelaide yeah. games. Yeah. <laughs> Ragging out on his own team. Yeah, but anyway, <laughs> now we'd like to get into what we call our hot guys. This is why, this is why, this is why I'm hot. Ooh, wee. Sorry to Azadoxian if you're watching. I know you don't like the gunshot. I should have warned you beforehand. <laughs> but I'll let you go with the first few hot guys, mate. Yeah, mate. Uh, Lockie Neal, definitely hot after his 35, uh, 35 disposal performance after... Um, after what he did against Collingwood. So he's back on the hot guy list. Zorko, he's run off halfback. It looks to be that he's gotten the halfback role for Brisbane. Definitely keeping an eye on that. Harry mm -hmm. Mackay, as I did say, this is going to be his bet. I believe this will be his best game for a while. Um, but still, this is he's definitely on the hot guy list after his uh, 137 mm -hmm. Supercoach points. Chera, he's on the hot guys list for now. 
Just remember, Sam Walsh is nearing a return, and that will kill Chera. Um, George Hewitt, 26 touches, six tackles. I He doesn't get hurt as much from Walsh returning as Chera, but still, he'll probably take a blow. Kerno, four goals, 15 touches, uh, 27 free kicks, five 50-meter penalties, gets him 122 supercoach points, so that's, that's good. Um, Elijah Hollands. Yes, we're definitely keeping an eye on him after the very impressive 115. Again, want to see it against um, against a team where they're not pretty much guaranteed to win straight from the start. Um, I cannot believe that this guy has gone cold two weeks in a row and now he is finally sitting on the hot guys list because this was a bloody good game by him. 132 from Hayden goddamn Young after we just shit all over him. And now he's on to the hot guy list, but there you go. Yep. But someone that has is on the hot guy list and will probably remain on the hot guy list for a long goddamn time. Luke, Luke Ryan. Again, 130 super coach points. I'm pretty sure he's averaging. He'd be cool. He'd be top five averaging for super coach this year. So mm-hmm. he is uh, going absolutely through the roof horse. Who else is hot in your eyes, mate? Yeah. Caleb's wrong. He's still hot. Still <laughs> It was a little bit quiet okay. in this game, but still 125 t- uh, super coach points, and he's going to make bulk cash still too. Jordan mm-hmm. Clark, he's a hot guy. He's been on a hot guy all year. Fuego. 100, yep, 119 super coach points. Keen from oh. Adelaide makes I'm our not keen. hot guy list. I'm not keen at all, but 20, <laughs> 26 touches, 11 marks, 118 super coach points at 289k. Rory mm-hmm. Led, 111 super coach points after his 25 touches. He'll get more of the ball moving forward. Dyson Heppel, he's on the list again. 139 super coach points, 30 disposals, 12 marks. Don't trust it, but love to see it. Nick Martin, yep, that'd be right. He goes yeah. large, like Hayden Young. Uh, 136 super coach points from 44 touches, which is an equal Bombers record. Had it on a string and at 75% efficiency. Zach Merritt, he's on here again. Another great game by him. 131 super coach points. Sweet. Jack Steele, 126 super coach points. He has been ultra consistent to start the year. And if you do not have him, I highly suggest you look to get him in. Mm-hmm. The boner, Skitty? The boner. Yep, he's hot again after being flaccid last week. Um, he comes in 104 super coach points. So the boner who's obviously found the Viagra in the cupboard, those special little blue pills. A blue and pill. He, it is blue. Uh, I've been told by friends. Oh, yep, excellent. Yeah, yeah. I've never rated Dad's <laughs> cabinet. <laughs> um, yep, he's back and he's ready, rocking and rolling again. Um, we got Willem Drew, mate. Shout out to this bloke because that was unreal. Mm. Let him off the chain again, Hinkley, because he is going to keep scoring very, very nicely. Um, I, I think we need a new category of hot guys for the super, super duper hot chili guys, and that's Max Gorn because he belongs in a category of his own. 177 super coach points. Yep. He's just, he's just, uh, I have to figure out how to get him in. I, I can't delay it anymore. Mm-hmm. Um, Alex Neil Bullen, 134 super coach points. Yep. Again, we love the role there. Very super coach friendly, high half forward um, defensive pressure kind of role there for him. I was going to give it to you, horse, but I'm giving it to it again because Jason Johannesson is on the hot guys <laughs> list. <Yeah. laughs> JJ's on the hot guys list after 104 yeah. super coach points, along with Lockie Bramble. He got 98. So the two running halfbacks for the Western Bulldogs, not getting killed as much as we thought for, uh, from the likes of Bailey Dale because they are working so well with them and pushing quite high up. Those two push higher up to the ha- like wing and half forward line rather than Bailey Dale, who sits back. So, yep, love that role for them. But uh, who else are you thinking, Horace? Jeremy McGovern, 120 oh, super coach points. West Coast would absolutely be stuffed without him in their back yep. line. But it's just a matter of time until he gets hurt. But this guy, this is the guy that I am looking yep. to get in this week. Yep. Nicholas of the last one, 167 mm-hmm. super coach points. He has been going nuts this year. Let's. Uh, he, he is a genuine option. Let's look mm-hmm. to see if we can get him in. Timmy Taranto, yep. he's back on the hot guys list after making an appearance on the cold guys list a couple of weeks ago. 128 super coach points with his 35 touches. Shy Bolton, after two weeks on the cold guys list, now makes the hot guys list. 
And that'll probably, probably be, be the cold. theme for his year. Hot and cold. <laughs> yeah. Not pace of swans, but 119 super coach points. He looked dangerous with the ball on the ground. Heaney, he has not left this list all season. Surely mm. there's no way that he doesn't continue playing mid. He's he's locked into oh. that midfield role now with how good we can see that he is. Uh, Grundy makes an appearance here for the first time this year. A solid game. And we know how hard Nank is to play against. He's around the ground work was really good. We brought up last week that we saw that he's getting his legs back. And sure enough, he pops off with his 114 here. Yep. Matty Roberts, 98 super coach points from 27 touches. A great run from defense. And Sydney are looking to get the ball in his hand. And also from today, James Warfel Ooh. led all players with 148 super coach points for the Hawthorne Footy Club. Now, before I move on, I've a quick rundown of the top five super coach scorers so far this season. Yep. Any guess who number one will be? I'd have to say Max Gorn. Max Gorn is currently sitting number three. Oh, Caleb Sarong. Number 12. Really? Shit, it shot him down that far, right? Eh? Yeah. Uh, this, uh, sorry, this hasn't updated from, uh, from this week. So we're going gotcha. from last week, um, yep. the top five from last week, because this will definitely be different this week because Darcy Cameron was sitting at number five before his 14-point performance. So he right. was at number five. Chad Warner was at number four. Maxi you might want to, number three. Hey, on, horse, you might want to look into that on like average-wise just purely because obviously the buy-around guys that's, had the – That's right. Yeah. Yep. So, so we're just going on total points. Maxi Gorn is number three. Christian Petraka number two. And Isaac Heaney number one. But when yeah. we're looking at averages from last week, Caleb Sarong, number one, Zach Butters, yep. number two, Luke Ryan, number That's three, right. yep. Luke Jackson, number four, Ooh. and Isaac Heaney, number five. With Merritt at six, McGovern at seven, Petraka at eight, Setterfield was at nine, but he missed that game, and Rory Laird at 10. With your man, She's God, sitting in Ooh. 11th spot. Ooh. Let's talk about some cold guys. Hey, yeah, horse. This, yeah. So, just quietly, so Nick Velastuin had uh, the second highest super coach score of the round last year. Mm -hmm. On uh, sorry, last this week. Sorry. Um, fun fact: I kicked a goal on him in the uh, under 14s 2014 grand final. Just uh, uh, sorry, 2000. However old I was in 14, but yeah, there you go. Um, <laughs> cold guys, Jordan Nagui. We we do have an update on the the hot guys. Sorry, it is. Heaney, Gorn, Vlastuin, Petraka, Sarong as the top five. Thank, Thank you, you, Deadly. deadly. We, yeah, we yeah, love man. his work. And he's good on the punt too, the man. I like his work. Bloody oath he is. Yep. Love um, that. He gets let's talk, right stuck in. Let's talk with <laughs> Dagoe. Dagoe. Yeah. Dagorn. Dagoe. The shit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wee wee. Yeah. 18 <laughs> touches, 55 super coach points. He was shit house again. Please. Mm. Do not consider him in your team. It is hot mm. and cold a lot of the time with Dugowie. Darcy Cameron was even worse. Mm. 18 supercoach points after being averaging 117 supercoach points per game. Finn McRae was subbed off on 30 points, but for those of you that held on to him, he did make his break even of 27, so he might make you a, a couple of K coin, but it's awesome. someone that I'd be looking to move on from. Yep, yes, couldn't agree more. And Horsey, we're just going to have a quick one. Uh, shout out to our Discord boys where they wanted me to throw in my Ooh. cone of the week. And this week's cone of the week and the coldest guy of the cold guys, Eric Hipwood with an absolute shitter. That was horrible. And uh, beautiful. All right, carry what, what, on. Do you, what, what do you score? I think he scored 18. Hang on. <laughs> let me just let me just double check. I know it was absolute shit out. Yep, he played the whole game and he got 12. He had eight <laughs> disposals, four marks, three free kicks against, one tackle, no goals, absolute shit ass. Congratulations, Eric. You are the code of the week. And one big L. That's right. <laughs> LDU, very disappointing as well. 27 touches, but did nothing with it. 67 super coach points. Fisher, 20 touches, 70 points. He's cold. You'd be looking to move him if you had him. Dersma, and I'm talking about the Dersma from the Kangaroos. Same. Seven touches, 29 super coach points. As we've said in the past, this guy is going to be good in time, but rookie forwards are never consistent with their super coach scoring, especially in their first few years. 
especially in a side that is very lucky focused. Uh, we spoke earlier about Jaeger O'Meara, the Jaeger bomb, absolute shadow of his former self, seven touches, 20 super coach points. Jordan Dawson also gets a shout out again for the second week in a row here. 27 touches, looks good on paper, but only 68 super coach points. And this is a direct effect of Crouch being in the side. He will tidy up his possession, uh, possessions and his disposal efficiency eventually, but let's enjoy the price drop until we're ready to jump on. Yep. Darcy Wilson, Skitty. Yeah, mate, that wasn't uh, that wasn't a very impressive game. Only twenty five super coach points. Just got absolutely destroyed uh, by positioning, basically by Dersma. Dersma just outsmarted him and killed him the whole game. Uh, Jack Billings, ooh, yuck, yuck, yuck. Forty two super coach points. He was actually in contention for the cone of the week, but uh, he Does got he subbed one? out. Like, no, nah, no, nah, it was just Hitwood because he was in contention because he got subbed. So Go I can let him off on that. Does he want yep. one? Get that <laughs> Yeah, righto. Yeah. Um, How's uh, 26 super coach points, making the cash. I'm not super worried about him being on the cold guys list just because May was out, May probably back uh, next week. I reckon. And yeah. he was in more of a um, lockdown defender, like heavy kind of role. So he wasn't able to actually do much else without it. Mm -hmm. Jack McRae, God, this is shit. Uh, 59 super coach points, 20 disposals, 50% CBA, but no, 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 no. Mm -hmm. He is just all over the shop. Um, I'm going to say 90% of the Eagles team, they can, they, <laughs> they all pretty much get a chance to be cone of the week, but they're also definitely on cold guys list. Um, especially Chesser. God, he's shit. Um, oh, he's outside so of bad. Yo, <laughs> yeah, Yo, McGovern, Duggan, Kelly, Reed. I, I wouldn't even be thinking of any of other, the, <laughs> these other guys. The Western Bulldogs were going for their piece. It was a driving oh, test with the amount of cones they were just driving around. Yeah, just navigating their way through cones. It was pretty bloody easy. The, yeah, I'll throw one more player in there as well. Um, what's the guy that we use as a loop? <laughs> what's his name? Livingston. Livingston. Yeah, Livingston. He can be in your team as well, purely for yep. loops because he's he's a massive cone. Um, <laughs> Jaden Short, um, sixty super coach points. Yeah, get rid of him. Done. 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 No. Nope. He's dropping serious coin, and the Tigers yep. are happy to use other players out of halfback to utilize the kicking that he could provide. Um, Bleached Arsehole, 100% is on the Cold Guys list. 73 super coach points, just mm -hmm. way too offensive minded, needed to really chop his teammates out more than he did. Um, Errol Gordon on the Cold Guys list, and this is because of the shocking disposal efficiency. He will be way better than this. Yes, super quiet be. first half. Comes home hard in the second half. He'll be much better. Uh, Luke Brost. Oh, yeah, no. Nah, there was some real piss. He looks decisions. done. He looks absolutely he looks, done. Yeah, shocking today. So, unfortunately, for there for Bruce. Why don't you talk about your favourite man, horse, Jack Ginnivan. He was ducking a lot today, wasn't he? Just oh, like He was just playing for free kicks all day, and it was disgusting to watch. 45 in fairness, though, 11 he touches. got... In fairness, he got pretty unlucky not to get, like, I think two, his last two were pretty stiff not to get. Yeah. But, shit, the first, I think he did it, like, the first, like, five times, and the umpire was like, you're kidding yourself, mate. But the last two, yeah. geez, was stiff not he's, to get. He's a victim of circumstance. He's set himself up for that. So Well, it's like the boy who cried wolf. Stop fucking yep. flopping, then you dickhead. Just go yep. at the ball, and you might be able to get a buddy for a high free kick. Hey, Skitty. Yo. Tell us what you really think. Ah, uh, stop <laughs> flopping, you flop. <laughs> you flop. And Grind Myers, the Argentinian Messi. Oh, no. Uh, six, yeah, he's on the That's cold guard. Uh, 60 <laughs> super coach points from his 21 touches also. Now, we've had our hot guys. We've had our cold guys. Let's get into the yeah. medical room. Bit of a banger, that one. I like it. It is, isn't it? Yeah, but it's a head bob. To start us off, mate, in some absolutely rotten news for the North Melbourne Footy Club, it looks as though Callan Coleman-Jones has done his Achilles. Yes. It Second Ruse like player to have done it in the last three weeks. Speedy yep. recovery to the big guy. He's, uh, yeah, not, not good at all for CCJ, unfortunately. Wishing him a happy uh, recovery, but it should open up. Uh 
should open up some more leg speed for uh, the North Melbourne forward line because, uh, yep. yeah, he just did not work as well as it was hoping down there. Marchbank has had an absolute horror run of injuries in the AFL, missing more games than he's played from his career. That started in 2015. Doesn't even feel like he started playing around there. He's no, only he able to play, yeah, 60 games in almost 10 years. He landed on his back. Then hit the back of his head on the deck, and a teammate landed on his head, had an HIA, and will most likely miss next week, mm-hmm. unfortunately for him. Charlie Kerno was seen hobbling from the ground late in the Blues win. Um, it's reporting that it may be a slight ankle issue. We'll keep an eye on that moving forward. Don't think it's anything uh, to go on before that. Um, oh, this one, this one did not look good. No. Wangan, uh, sorry, Nasiah Miller. Sorry. Wayne Miller, Jesus, yep. I'm gonna I'm gonna stuff this up so much this year. But Wayne Miller from the Adelaide Crows landed awkwardly on his knee, and it has now come back that he has a broken patella, which He's sucks for him. Yeah, that really really sucks. Um, Lockie Murphy had a knee injury after an incident in the last quarter of the game against Frio. Um, he's also been sent off for scans to determine the extent of the damage. Um, Tom Lynch. Not good, uh, not good, Mickle. No. And before we continue talking about Tom Lynch, make sure you like, subscribe, and click the bell beneath. Mm. Be a triple banger so you keep bing, up bing, to bing. date with all things AFL from the Inside Fantasy team. But also join our Discord, a ripping bunch of blokes in there. Tommy Lynch yeah. came off limping late, which what looked to be a knee injury. He said he was fine after the game, but now it's been said that he has a hamstring tendon injury and he's looking at 10 to 12 weeks on these sidelines. But an even bigger blow for Richmond, Noah Bolter, who's looked really good to start the year. Three to five weeks out with an MCL injury. That sucks. Yep. Yep, absolutely, mate. Don't you love also, too? Lynch saying, oh, yeah, I'm fine after the game in the report. Um, yeah, in the report for Fox 40. And then you're just like, this is why you don't trust AFL players. Because he said he was fine. Oh, and mm-hmm. look, now he's out for 10 weeks. Yep. So, shits me. Yep. And then we've got Dane Rampey subbed off in the second Due to a calf complaint, watch this space. It will help Roberts down back if he misses some time. And mm-hmm. Nick Watson went down late. Well, I think it was like in the last 30 seconds. That was a yeah, nasty was. one, wasn't it? His leg and yeah. ankle bent the wrong way under the tackler. He was helped off and may miss some time. Mm-hmm. Um, what I do want to bring up before we knock off, mate, is this. Here comes the money. Here we go. Money talk. Here comes the money. We had our first weekend with our punters club in the chat, and we were mm-hmm. well and truly up, weren't we? Outrageously up, horse, I'll tell you that much. And if um, if Tom Atkins didn't get subbed at three-quarter time, me could have been up a lot more. But, yes, um, shout out to uh, the boys in our punters club. We made some bloody good coin. I think we, yeah. uh, we hit on the North Melbourne game. We hit on the... Yep. Uh, the big one to start um, the week was Bobby Hill three goals. Yep, Bobby Hill three goals, an absolute absolute masterclass that, that there. Was we also hit on dollars. Yep, yep, uh, yep, uh, yep, something like that. Oh, and one of the agencies. Yeah, I got it at eight. Um, we hit the Melbourne Port Adelaide game as well. Um, I know Kizza, our uh, president of the Punters Club, he is up probably. Oh, he'd be depending on how he went today. I'm pretty sure he'd be up about two k. So mm-hmm. we're we're loving that. Uh, we know we're a super coach kind of thing, but we uh, we love the fact that we're able to talk a bit yeah. of bets as well and use a bit yeah. of the knowledge that we have to be able we're, to help out. We're also very mindful that we bet responsibly and Correct. you only bet what you can afford to lose. So mm-hmm. if you're ready and willing to have a bit of fun with the boys and talk some footy and maybe make a little bit of cash on the side, you are more than welcome to join our punters club, yeah. which is in our AFL chat on Discord. There's, getting- and there's also no no hard no hard calls or anything like that. If you want to bet 50, if you want to bet 10, I normally bet around 15, 20 or so. But if you want to bet a dollar, two bucks, yep, horses are five bucker. We've got a couple of blokes that do just one dollar, two dollar bets. Nothing wrong with that. We're just here to to have a bit of banter, ride the wave as well throughout each game. We have um, we have discussions for each game um, as well. So you can just talk with the boys, ride along with the multis, talk with the lads as we're doing it as well. Um, 
we got questions that we need to go through, horse, or are we? Uh, are it we was one, there? yeah. No, I mean, we you've kind of been highlighting them as we've no. gone, but that's all right. No. <laughs> With that one, mate. Yep. So brought in Win Hager. Saw he had good CBAs, roughly eighty percent. Plays bad and gets suspended. I've got to cover and replace him. I don't know whether to keep him with a solid role and Brad Crouch out. The thing about Marcus Windhager is very much liking how he has that mid uh, defender DPP at the moment, but he is a tagger at the end of the day and they will utilize him as such. Um, I think when Crouch comes back, that will uh, eventually hurt him, Mm -hmm. but that's in maybe five weeks or so. So, um, Wait, was Windhager the one that got suspended for that hit? Was he got it? he got a week? Yep. Why? Okay, righto. That I guess it was kind of like Kings. Fair enough. Um, yeah, I if you've got the ability to uh, to hold him on the bench, seeing as this is a full no buy round game, then uh-huh. you could probably afford to hold. But if not, I would move on. I don't yeah. think he's going to make enough coin to make it uh, viable. Stat for me, Skitty from Kizza. Wardlaw had his first recorded bounce on the weekend. I know I was already, uh, I was so excited for him. He almost fell over and then he kicked the goal at the end of it too. Um, God, he's going to be a bloody good player. So, And from yeah. Deadly, mate, if you had to pick one, Brown or Draper, which way are you going? So Brown, so Draper is 123 on the bubble in defense. And what's Brown? He's 150. 150 on the, yeah. Mid, yeah, I'll, I'll double check that. Yeah, I so I like Brown more as of a player. Tom Brown is 154 defender. Oh, he's defender, and he has a negative 35 break even. I like and Brown is way more for super coach. 123k defender, he has a minus yep. 32 break even. I like Brown if. He's a way better super coach player to be able to generate score than Draper is. It just depends on his job security. Draper's going to have a fair amount of dra- job security for a while just because of the injuries to Frio. Um, mm-hmm. So I lean Brown. Where do you lean? I lean Draper. Ooh, interesting. Is that purely because yeah. of job security? Uh, 30K, which means I'll be able to use the money elsewhere. I think Brown will potentially score a little bit more, but. Um, when I'm looking rookies, I'm looking to maximise one job security, but two the amount of money that I'd go sideways back into a primo. Okay, in that retrospect, yes, I would agree that I would lean Draper. I was looking at more in the ability for the super coach scoring wise. Yeah, Brown definitely out will be able to out do Draper in that kind of way. But from a pure money perspective and job security wise, I would lean Draper. It just depends on when his Momentum and run kind of like runs out. Yep. Yeah. Um, for those of you that were worrying about the boner, he has stiffened up from 280k to 326k as well and has a break even of 34. Ooh. Anything else you'd like to add, mate, before we knock off for the evening? No, nah, mate. Um, no, nah, well, we've, we've got one more question. Oh, yep, Thanks for joining us, House. Nice to see any, you. Here, any mate. others, boys? Chuck them in real quick. Yep. Is swapping Billings for a donkey and saving 305k worth a trade? Yes. Yes. <laughs> Mate, if, if you had the opportunity to this week, I would almost certainly go Billings to Darcy. Free yourself up 200k, mate, and go sideways into a bloody, into a primo in your mids or down back. Yeah, I would probably, yeah, I'd be looking to swap Billings for anyone that is going donkey to. Donkey's more useful. <laughs> Big facts. Yeah, I'd be swapping billings to pretty much anyone that's going to make me any sort of coin. Um, Scorcher says, when's Draper's bubble? That this is week. This week, brother. So he uh, he missed round one, two, three, and now – am I right in that? No, wait. Yep. What round are we up to? No, yeah, we have to yeah, round four. Yep. Uh, and Charlie, thanks for joining us. Charlie, Fisher and Fife to Darcy and Flanders. Rate it. Like it. Yeah. Yeah, I think I do like it. Yeah. Uh, yes, I think I would take uh, that. Yeah, this is about the time to to move. Yep. And that's all we've got, mate. So if you haven't yet, please hit like and subscribe. Hit the bell. Uh, once we finish this, I will add the details for our Discord. Please jump in there. There is lots of footy chat going on. Just in our footy 
super coach chat alone, we had over 3,000 comments from the past week. Oh. Let's look to get that over four to 5,000 next week as we look to build our super coach community. And there's a few players that we had no idea about, i.e., Toby Conway from Geelong that Asa brought up that yeah. is going to look really relevant potentially next week. Yep. I do like the in depth. Um, yeah, the in-depth like formation into some of these plays where we can get a little bit extra. Just you know, I mean, Asa, just stop being so goddamn biased, mate. I mean, come on. <laughs> <laughs> now we but, love the we love yeah, the work. Absolutely. But for tonight, this is Skiddy on the horse, and this has been another episode of the Insight Fantasy Sports AFL team. We'll see you Wednesday night for our live catch up. Ooh.